Well, good morning, everybody. Um, thanks so much for coming. Um, we appreciate the interest. Uh, the University of Hawaii today released the results of our first ever system-wide um, student climate study on sexual harassment and um, uh, domestic violence. Um, of course, anytime we have to report anything that isn't all good news, it's with a little bit of trepidation, but we're actually pretty proud of what we've accomplished um, with this. Um, it's really important that we understand a problem if we're going to be able to address it. And that's what this survey is all about. It's um, establishing a baseline so that we understand what our students have to say about the prevalence of um, sexual harassment and sexual violence. And I wanna emphasize the survey is about their experiences both on and off campus because we wanna understand everything that they're experiencing in their lives. Um, and establish a baseline. Um, it will help us focus our efforts to um, improve the, um, the conditions for our students, both on and off campus, and also to understand whether the things we're doing are actually making a difference and um, improving quality of life for them all. Um, I think most of you have, have read through. Let me just say a couple things. Um, we based this on um, the, well, first it was professionally administered, so this is not an in-house survey. It was done by OmniTrack, who was selected for their um, experience on it, and, and I wanna thank them for their assistance as well. Um, it was funded with support from the legislature. Um, this is considered a national best practice, and we were able to leverage some of the activities of the um, American Association of Universities, or AAU Universities, um, which started this kind of activity a couple of years ago. Um, we worked with a group of uh, UH students from around the system to customize this and understand how we would be able to roll it out uh, to our students in our community. Um, and we got pretty good results, about um, 6,300 out of the uh, 44,000 students that were on our campuses last spring. So that's about 14%, um, which is pretty good for a survey of this kind. It's a 20 to 30 minute investment. Um, and by far most of the students who started the survey finished, although um, certainly not all. Um, the students responded positively to the survey, which is good because if we don't have that, we're not gonna be able to continue this. And our plan is to um, administer the survey uh, every two years. So not every year, but every two years so that we can um, keep an idea of how we're doing. Um, in general, our students feel safe on campus. Um, and, and you can see that in the results when you look at them. Um, people who contacted our resources found them very helpful. And we've been building up over the past three or four years um, a fair number of resources on our campuses and with our community partners as well um, in order to um, help support our students um, throughout the, their, the UH campuses. Um, not everybody knew who to contact, so that's obviously an area we need to get the word out to our students about where to go, and it's great to know that in general, once they contact someone, they feel pretty well supported um, by the university. We looked at um, uh, intimate partner violence, so that's the um, acronym IPV, um, or domestic violence is a, a related term for that. Um, and that was unfortunately more prevalent than we would like. Obviously that isn't just a campus problem, that's a social problem, but it um, impacts our campuses as well. And so it's something we've got to pay attention to, um, whether or not the uh, intimate partner is a member of the UH community or not. We're concerned when this is something that affects our students and obviously it impacts their lives and their, um, uh, their ability to um, uh, partake in a high quality UH education. Um, I won't say we were surprised, but um, we wish all of the numbers were lower. And so when we look at something like this, um, it's an opportunity for us to uh, tailor our programs to make improvements so that all of our students can become safer on campuses. So um, the full results just went out today. 
each of our campuses will, um, you know, the, the results will be parsed out by campus for each campus so that each campus chancellor and their team and their Title IX office can look at what sorts of programs would be uh, most useful and applicable on their campuses. Um, and that, um, while some of the support is um, centralized at the system le level, such as the administration of, of this survey, um, the action is really on the campuses as well. So that's where uh, a lot of our efforts will be focused. Um, maybe with that, I'll see if there are questions. I'll, I've got my experts here as well. So um, I'll acknowledge a few people. Um, Jen Rose is our director of the Office of um, Institutional Equity. Who, and that office under Vice President Jan Govea, who's hiding in the back there, were really the driving force um, behind pulling this together and um, getting us to a really important baseline survey for the whole University of Hawaii system. How did you come up with the questions? Did you have that, co that committee form the questions, or how did, how did that come up? So OmniTract helped us with that. Um, we had the AAU questions as a baseline, and then in that process, we engaged our community as well. And you came up with that many questions, because there's kind of a lot of questions, right? Were there a lot that you decided to throw out, leave out, or add more in? Um, I don't think we added questions from scratch, right? But we tried to optimize them for our audience. You want to come up, Jen? Yeah, we, we use the AAU. Come, come to the mic. We use the AAU uh, survey instrument as our basis um, so that we could have a national comparison. And we also uh, took the recommendations from the AAU methodological report, but we're very proud of the fact that we did extensive focus groups and our Omnitrack CEO is here, Pat Louie, who can explain a little bit more about that if you have any more methodolo methodological questions. But based on those, we did fine tune some of the questions. I don't know if we added anything from scratch, Pat, based on uh, the focus group feedback. The section on intimate partner violence was expanded slightly. As, as recommended by the AAU benchmark. So this would be one of the uh, first uh, uh, opportunities that you'll see a university really take, take on intimate partner violence in a comprehensive manner. And you'll see that from the report. Um, AAU is, a, is the Association of American Universities. And, and the interesting thing about AAU, they got way out in front of this very early on. And um, they, so they're an association of the most prestigious research universities in the country. Um, they administered their survey and it actually was not well received at about half of the member universities. So we had the benefit, not just of the AAU survey itself, but the feedback and that's the methodology group that Jen uh, mentioned that looked at their first survey and then how they could improve it. So we had the benefit, not just of their survey, but also their lessons learned. So now that you have the results, um, can you give us an example of what programs or, or what may come of uh, things on campus that students may have access to now that the results are out? Well, the first one that comes to mind for me, and again, uh, I wanna emphasize that it's campus by campus, but um, students don't know where to go for help. So again, um, they are pleased with the help when they go for it in general, but it's not top of mind for them where to go. I don't know if that's part of that is the Google generation that they assume if they need help, they'll be able to find it. But I think um, we probably need to do a better job of getting the word out um, so that everybody knows, and, and that was part of the message I sent out to all of our students today, um, was again a listing of the offices that are there to help our Title IX offices, but also we have confidential advisors if people don't know if they want their, um, their concern shared. Um, a lot of times in the early days, they're much more comfortable talking with someone confidentially. You said you sent that email out today to students with locations? That's correct. What about future plans for letting them know what, what their options are? Yeah, w absolutely. We need an ongoing program across our campuses. Again, that was one of the major takeaways for me when I read through the results of something we can do pretty quickly and, and um, positively. And, and we started building that into things like new student orientation programs. But pretty much every chance we get, I think we need to continue to, to let students know that um, we're here to help. And, and, and I should emphasize a lot of these programs have been built up just over the past um, really two, three years when 
um, UH and, and really higher education across the country uh, began to um, uh, take on Title IX and this aspect of Title IX as a major initiative. Do you have any um, statistics you can provide about uh, the number of sex assault, sex harassment cases that have been investigated over the last couple of years? Uh, probably if you want to, I don't have any of those numbers with me today. and. Um, there isn't really a central repository at this point. Again, most of the cases are handled on each campus if they involve activity on a campus. Um, but um, a couple of people have asked us, so we'll see what we can pull together over the next week or so. Could you also go over what, what are the policies? If I'm a student and another student makes um, you know, a pass at me that I'm not a fond of, um, what, what do I do? So that, um, I mean, a, so you really hit uh, a key point is, you know, what is, um, what is sexual harassment? So the definitions in the survey might not be exactly the same as what might be legally enforceable. So there's a fair amount of, um, of area in there. But at this point, what we wanted to understand is, um, with our students, is it perceived as sexual harassment? So depending on what you mean by pass, um, that might or might not be sexual harassment, right? That could just be, um, you know, an in expressing an interest in, in another student. Um, so w what we have is we have the numbers from the students, and I think we're sharing the data. Um, we have the numbers of respondents who say they experience sexual harassment. So um, the, um, in general, the, uh, respondents, that is the 14% or so who responded, are demographically representative of our student body. Um, we ask ourselves, and we have no evidence of this, um, are we likely to have oversampled students who actually ha experienced uh, domestic violence or sexual harassment, just because they would be more likely, perhaps, to complete the survey. But um, I don't think there's any way to suggest you know, we don't know that for a fact. So we just, we know what percentage of respondents answered certain questions in certain ways. And that's an indicator to us. And again, our assumption is that as baseline data, um, we want those numbers to go down based on the interventions we um, undertake over the next, you know, in this case, it'll be another two years before we do this particular survey again in this format. Uh, but like right now, like if I'm a student and I had a complaint that I felt needed to be addressed, how is it handled? You go to the Title IX office. That's the best first place to go on your campus. Every campus has a Title IX coordinator. That was not the case four years ago. Um, and there's an office or, and or a person on every campus. Um, we have confidential resources available for students on every campus. That was done through a set of community partnerships that actually we announced here last year. Um, rather than duplicate some of the great services in the community, we're leveraging them. That, um, so we're really pretty proud of that. That's another innovative approach that we've taken here at the University of Hawaii that a lot of our um, peer institutions have not done. But there absolutely is a place. There absolutely is an investigative process. Um, and um, the, all of our Title IX coordinators have access to investigative resources. And we also have access to confidential um, resources for students, um, for students of every campus. And is that process any different for um, when a student makes a claim against another student versus a student making a claim against? This, if the student is the person expressing the claim, that's our focus, and it goes to the Title IX office. I know this was a comprehensive survey and unusual in its scope in terms of all the different levels, both sec, um, two year and right. four year and including intimate partner violence. But can you um, compare how the results, or do you have any way to I, suggest how they stack up compared to other campuses? Well, we looked at um, how we compare to AAU universities um, on a couple of fronts, I think. Let me just pull up what we have on that. Is that still in the slides? Okay. Um, as far as the national comparisons, some the f concepts, the concepts that we used in the framing of the questions were very similar to AAU. As we mentioned, because of the focus group uh, feedback, we did um, fashion some of the questions slightly differently. Um, 
if you look at uh, the prevalence across the board and compared to AAE, we're actually lower in terms of sexual harassment um, and non-consensual sexual contact, which includes uh, touching or penetration, um, and slightly higher for domestic violence and for stalking. And again, we're gonna look um, more carefully at, at those comparisons, and they're not exactly apples to apples because of the slightly different um, posing of the questions. Thank you. Sorry, before you uh, step out, can we get your uh, first and last name, how to spell it, and your title? Jennifer Rose, um, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, last name R-O-S-E, and my title is Director of the Office of Institutional Equity for the UH System. Jennifer, I think this would be a good question for you. Um, so the survey found that one in 16 respondents reported non-consensual contact. Uh, we know nationally at college campuses, those numbers are around one in five for sexual harassment or assault. Why do you think these numbers are so much lower? Do you think it could have to do with students not really knowing where to go? Um, I think that not knowing where to go is not directly connected to the lower numbers. Although, as President Lasner mentioned, we really want to work on that. And the fact that only one in six students actually went to get help tells us that we still have some work to do in that area. Um, as far as the non-consensual sexual contact, um, our questions are very similar to AAU. So um, it is interesting that our numbers are lower. But I think you asked the question of sexual harassment and sexual assault. And I think sexual harassment, you you're, are going to get larger numbers. The way that we ask the question, um, you know, you can speculate. We separated out um, the question of whether or not the, per the person felt offended by the behavior. It impacted them negatively in their academics. Um, and so there could be some cultural issues. Again, we have to really work with the campuses and take a, a, a good look at those statistics, work with the legislature, our community partners, and see what sort of the sig significance of that is. But it is an interesting question. Thank you for asking it. And, and I should say, though, the one in six is not what was reported to offices. That's the res survey respondents, right? So it, again, the, there are a lot of nuances to where you get these numbers from. Were you guys able to tell in the results, were there more student-on-student uh, -student claims, uh, student-professor claims, was that anything? The numbers were different for undergraduate and graduate students. So undergraduate tended to be more student-student. Graduate students had a higher prevalence of graduate student faculty. What do you see as the bright spots in the survey? Um, I would say for me, the brightest spots were, um, I think I'm, I'm really proud of our team for, for doing this. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's no fun to stand up here and talk about this as a president. Um, but it's absolutely necessary, and I think it's kind of interesting. We did this last spring, long before Me Too, but this has prepared us to really understand that situation um, within our institution. Um, I would say the um, positive responsiveness to the survey um, and the, um, the fact that um, most of our students feel safe on campus um, that they're not afraid to be here for events. Um, and I would say their um, satisfaction with the services that are already being provided um, was relatively high. And, and those are things we can drive up the numbers, but it, um, there are a lot of ways this could have been far more depressing and I could have been far more uncomfortable here today if the, the results were, were different than they were. What prompted Julia's response? We actually had been doing this um, for a while, but not very rigorously or systematically. And um, when there was uh, significant national and local attention on Title IX compliance as it relates to sexual harassment and sexual violence, um, we started looking at how to do this um, really much more rigorously and systemically. Um, this is although the survey was administered last spring, um, it represents over a year of work really to figure out how we were gonna do it and how seriously we were gonna take it. Um, so we committed to do it as part of our overall digging in seriously on Title IX, which began three or four years ago, really. I do wanna mention that uh, we have Nancy Craven here. 
uh, as well from DVAC, and we also have uh, Representative Linda Ichiyama as well, Ooh. who's been uh, um, uh, one of the definitely one of the lawmakers that's been heavily involved in this effort. So they're both available uh, as well. So well, I, I think Nancy has been an amazing community partner with us. So. Um, Thank you, Nancy, and, and, and I mentioned some of our community partnerships in um, not duplicating services that are available in the community where we can partner. Um, so that's been one, and Representative Ichiyama has been um, our, one of our most staunch supporters in the legislature that helped um, identify the resources that have made a lot of this possible, along with her colleagues in the Legislative Women's Caucus. So thank you, Linda. Uh, can you define or say what the university definition is of sexual harassment? Um, I'm going to ask Jen to tell you the definition that we used in the survey, if that makes sense. We can give it to you offline too. Okay, okay. okay. That's, right. we'll send it to you. that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other questions? Or should anybody interested in talking, hearing from Nancy or Representative yeah, Chiang? Nancy, Nancy <laughs> yes. Uh, we have able to step up. <laughs> Hi, this is a, a really, really important thing for the, should I, you want to go first? No, okay, uh, this is a really, really important thing for the, for the community and I, I just wanted to thank the uh, president of the university and the uh, Office of Institutional Equity for the incredible work uh, they did in partnership with Omnitrack. We at the Domestic Violence Action Center were not surprised about this data at all. I mean, the university does not exist in a vacuum. And we have intimate partner violence and sexual violence and dating violence occurring throughout the community and across the globe. So uh, our best gift to the community of students is to be available and the Domestic Violence Action Center devised and designed and is implementing a program on uh, community college campuses where we have advocates on campus to provide the confidential support and safety planning and uh, referrals and legal representation that they need to uh, succeed at their academic uh, career. So that's uh, an excellent partnership. Nancy, I found it was interesting that uh, survey results, some of it reported that Native Hawaiians are more vulnerable to mm -hmm. experiencing, uh, whether it be domestic violence or sexual harassment. Um, is there anything that you can recommend to the university about uh, zeroing in on, on that uh, demographic of students or, or how to better help approach? Uh, um, that, again, that's not, uh, that doesn't happen in isolation either. Our uh, Con largest concentration of clients at the Domestic Violence Action Center are uh, Native Hawaiian families and uh, Filipino families. Um, so uh, our work has been to try to keep banging into that one particular microphone. Our work uh, has been to try to tailor programs for our ethnic communities, and I think the university is very, very mindful of that. Uh, I worked with Omnitrack and the student team that was putting together the survey, and we talked a lot about how to. Uh, frame questions and inqu make inquiries that are meaningful and will uh, result in good responses to give the university the data and OIE, the Office of Institutional Equity, the tools they needed to serve the Native Hawaiian uh, communities and other ethnic uh, communities. I mean, when you talk about tailoring programs, is it more cultural based? Or yeah, what cultural do you mean based. by that? Yeah, yeah cultural based programs. to say, but I would just like to mention that the Women's Legislative Caucus has made Title IX a priority issue for the past few years, and uh, the results of this survey, I think, are really important because it gives us a baseline. We have, the, for the first time, an idea of what's going on on every campus and what's happening as far as student experiences of sexual harassment, sexual assault, dating violence, and stalking. And so this is how we can move forward. Now that we have this accurate and in-depth look of what's going on each campus, this is how we can move forward and figure out what programs are needed, what action is needed. And so I, I think the university did a really, a really thorough and thoughtful job in this survey, and I'm very happy with the results that came out with it. Are you planning on introducing any legislation based on these results or advocating for uh, any funds to be allocated to the university to address some of these problems? The legislature's actually been uh, appropriating funds to the University of Hawaii um, in line
last year we also did also for the Department of Education for Title IX for the past three or four years. And so uh, I think right now we're at a point where uh, we'll be looking at all of the requests from the university and the department, um, whether or not they're Title IX related and whether or not they're gonna be a priority. I think though, as far as, as, far as Title IX goes, yes, uh, the Women's Legislative Caucus is uh, considering its bill package right now. And one of the bills up for consideration is a state version of Title IX. Uh, we also are very concerned about the rollback that's been happening at the federal level with Secretary DeVos um, and her rescinding of the 2011 Dear Colleague letter. A lot of the protections that the Obama administration put into place for students and employees at educational institutions have been rolled back under the Trump administration. And so we want to create a state equivalent, a little Title IX, so that those protections are preserved for all of Hawaii students. Any more questions? I had a last question. Um, I'm not sure who's the best person to answer, but just given this day and age of, um, especially uh, the focus or the spotlight on sexual harassment in Hollywood and how it's you know headline after headline, day after day, we we find out uh, more of these incidents occurring, and it's sort of inspired many on social media, everyday people talking about things that they've never um, you know talked about or, or just felt like they they couldn't say. Um, do you think this impact? will make a difference on, on how people will feel to report something that has happened to them that maybe they wouldn't likely feel comfortable reporting. I think absolutely. I mean, I think the greater um, social awareness in the community um, will help. Um, it will make people more comfortable. They see so many other people reporting um, in Hawaii and nationally, um, that, and that's very healthy. Um, one of the things that happens is as we build up our programs and support, um, the first thing that happens is it looks like numbers go up because people are more comfortable reporting. And so, um, you know, that won't be good news on the surface, but actually every institution that has gotten serious about uh, developing programs to support students and, and faculty um, who have um, encountered sexual harassment, sexual violence, um, have, have seen those numbers go up before they start going down. So that is our anticipation.